How to easily get clients in any business. Today I'm gonna to give you five strategies that if you implement these five proven strategies, I call them five different areas of business development, no matter what company you're in, you will bring in more revenue. So if you're a new business and you're, and, and you're thinking about starting one but you don't really know what to do as far as bringing in clients and maybe no one's taught you that because we weren't taught that in school, we weren't really taught that from uh, you know, let's face it, our parents, if our parents didn't start a business, a lot of times we're not taught, hey, you have a great business idea, but how do you bring in revenue? Because bringing in revenue is the most important thing. If you're an existing business, you can always afford to bring in more revenue. So even if you have a business, stay tuned and you're going to hear all five of these strategies. If you like this type of content, please hit like. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Okay, number one is old school hand-on-hand -hand combat. And the reason I call it that is because this is all the stuff that people don't want to do. This is the door knocking. This is the cold calling. This is the cold visiting, maybe just showing up different places, going out, talking to people. This is talking to strangers, talking to people that you've never met and doing those things, cold calling that makes you so scared. I remember when I first started my business and I knew that cold calling worked. I own an insurance agency, we focus on business insurance, so me and my wife, we created a prospect list of 4,000 companies, and every week we just hit it, hit it, and it took us like four or five months to go through, or almost a year to go through that entire prospect list of calling everybody, but we got a ton of revenue from it. We got a ton of revenue from it because, let's face it, nobody wants to cold call because they're scared of rejection. Did I get rejected? Yes. Did I get cussed out? Multiple times, but... From that, that was the cornerstone of the business that I have now. I think I've produced over, uh, probably over a million dollars in revenue just from cold calling alone because cold calling, you get a, an account and then another referral from that account comes in. So you're nurturing your current client base and you get a bunch of referrals from it. So cold calling, meeting with strangers, getting in contact with somebody that you've never met is really, really important because a lot of times it's outside of our comfort zone. So that will, this is the only strategy that will 100% work and get results if you do it consistently. Okay, the other strategies, it's kind of speculative on how often or how quickly it works, but cold calling, cold visiting, hand-on-hand -hand combat will work 100% if you stick with it. Number two, networking with other businesses that have similar clients as you. So in my situation, I own an insurance agency. If we did a lot, we do personal lines, but we don't do a ton of it. So for home insurance, I would network with mortgage brokers because they're also dealing with people who are purchasing a house. Or I would network with realtors or I would network with potential personal bankers. I would network with people who would have people that, have, that own houses, right? What are those people? Um, how can I get in front of them so when somebody brings up insurance, they refer me? So if you think of a dry, uh, of a painting contractor, painting contractor is going to want to network with remodeling contractors, drywall contractors, um, potentially home improvement contractors, plumbers, you know, because sometimes they have to cut out drywall to get to a pipe or something. I don't know, but painters will want to network with anybody who will be in, within earshot of somebody who will need painting work done, Okay. So maybe even realtors, a lot of people buy houses, they don't like the paint that's in the current house, or maybe before they sell the house, they're gonna to wanna to repaint the house, the realtor recommends a painter. So networking with people to where you see where situations coming up where somebody needs a painter. So for you to do this, you're gonna say, what are situations coming up where somebody might need me? And who are they gonna be talking to when they need me? Okay, so networking is super important. If you can be the name that is brought up in the room consecutive, consistently among other people, you're basically, you have other people out there who are basically selling for you. They're selling your business, they're selling your name, so that when somebody is in need of something, they mention your name. They're a salesperson that is really unpaid. Now, you do have to somewhat um, provide a reciprocal to that, you have to potentially refer them business. So it is somewhat of a relationship to where you can't just network with every single realtor in town because eventually they're going to know that you're the guy who uh, is cheating on them with everybody else. Now, it may work for painting because they always need a good painter, but just be careful of how often you're networking with people because people do get jealous and your reputation is solid, so don't lose your reputation. Number three here is SEO online marketing. 
SEO is one of the biggest things that my business has transitioned to from cold calling. Uh, at the start, we freaking cold called our face off. Now, our new business has ventured more to people finding us online via our website and reaching out for a quote. And I talk to so many business owners that don't have websites that don't take care of their online store, which is um, having a Facebook page, having a Google page, having a website. People are shopping online today. When people want a product or a service, they look online. And when they search painter near me, insurance agent for apartment insurance near me, that your website better show up. Your business better show up so when that person clicks on it, they can find you. Essentially, Google is a marketplace to where it's free. A website is very cost, it costs very little, and it's really easy to learn SEO. And SEO is essentially writing your website in a form that when people search stuff, your website comes up. It's very easy. I've taught myself how to do it. Um, I wouldn't consider myself a super smart individual, uh, and I learned how to do it, so I believe that you can learn too. So you need to be where the eyeballs are. People are shopping online, so therefore you need to be online as well. Number four is hard marketing. Okay, so hard marketing, I put it further down the list because sometimes it works, sometimes you waste money, okay? This is uh, showing up at festivals, having a table and saying, hey, um, passing out koozies, passing out all these little freebies, which cost a lot of money, and it costs a lot of money to be at these festivals, um, trade shows. Where are your clients at? Where are your shoppers at? If you're, um, if you're in the wedding business, right, maybe you would show up at the home show for weddings every single year when brides and grooms are walking around looking for somebody for a wedding planner. Um, so you're showing up where those, where that targeted niche customer is. If you're a very niche focused, a lot of times you'll want to show up at these and be able to put your name out there. Name recognition, brand recognition is a huge thing. This type of marketing is not direct results. A lot of people think that if they go to a trade show and they set up a tent, that they think that they're going to get leads and they're going to close deals directly from that. A lot of times it doesn't come directly from that. It comes later on. So it's really hard for you to see if that sponsorship really paid for itself okay so tread lightly on this when you're a new business I wouldn't go too crazy on hard marketing sponsoring stuff sponsoring t-ball sponsoring all that stuff I wouldn't go too crazy on it I would wait for your profitability to come in and start slowly devoting a budget to this because it is a long play and if you do too much at the beginning you're not gonna see the benefit and you're gonna be frustrated and felt like you wasted money you didn't waste money you just didn't have extra money to throw at it right now number five is and this is an interesting one, but I've seen it work multiple times, is posting video content and relevant content on your personal Facebook. So a lot of people say, I don't want to put my business stuff on my personal Facebook, but you have to get known. You have to get attention. If you want to be successful in business, everybody has to know what you're doing. And more importantly than that, your friends on Facebook um, some of the people, they want to see you succeed. Now, some of them are watching you and waiting for you to fail. I get that. But some of them are watching and saying, hey, um, that's so cool that so-and-so started this new flooring business. And then every now and then, I wouldn't do it every day, but every now and then you're posting a video about you and your flooring business installing a floor. You're essentially being a little bit of a buzz in someone's ear. That every three or four days or once a week, you're saying you're kind of reminding them what you're doing. Um, I've done this with my own personal Facebook is every now and then I post a little something about insurance. Uh, a lot of my family ha has it kind of eventually some of those kind of friends that I know but don't know that much to kind of instead of me reaching out to them and say, hey, do you want to do insurance with me? I kind of every now and then remind them that I do insurance. I remind them, hey, I own an insurance agency. If anybody needs any quotes or kind of talk about my insurance agency or just bring it up in a way that isn't salesy. Okay, so you can kind of do this in your own personal Facebook where it doesn't look like you're saying, hey, if you need flooring, hit me up. And you could talk about, you know, hey, today we're installing flooring here. It's really cool. Let me show you the before and after. Here's a speed through of my business of me installing the flooring. That's really cool. People like to do it. They comment on it. And eventually, when somebody needs a floor, you'd be surprised how many of your friends will mention your name because they've seen you 52 times. If you do it every week, 52 times, that you own a flooring company. So those referrals and those leads will start pouring in. So if you do these five things, I'm confident that if you commit to them, a lot of people will try one and they won't continue it. You have to commit any strategy that you do in marketing, you have you have to commit to. If you're going to cold call, you got to cold call 20 calls a day. You got to commit to yourself to doing it on a longer 
on a, excuse me, on a longer term approach, okay? So commit to this, and if you like today's video and you got value out of it, I would ask that you hit like, and if you haven't done so and you like content like this, please hit subscribe.